I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. We're going tonight read the Word of God. It's located in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 12. And we are going to read from verse 1 to verse 4. Amen. Exodus from verse 1 to 4. The word says the following. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your account for the lamb. My brethren, this month we have been praying for our family members. This is a month in which the Lord has given an instruction for us to fast, to normally do our early dawns, but this month the focus of our prayer is our family members, our families. And the text here, we see a special moment for the people of God, for the people of Israel. It was a moment of a feast. It was the celebration of a feast. And this feast was called Passover. It is called Passover. And on this verse here, on this chapter, it is the beginning of this feast, just to start. And the Passover was a moment that was a landmark on for the people of Israel. For the, it was the departure of the people from Egypt. It was a moment which, uh, to this day, the people of Israel, the Jewish people, celebrate this feast. And they speak about it. They make mention of what happened, the departure of the people from Egypt, from the moment of slavery. And this feast, to this day, is celebrated. And if we look well the story of Israel, if we analyze it well, hum humanly speaking, it would be impossible for Israel to be delivered from Egypt. It would be impossible. Because Egypt was the nation, the, the most powerful nation of the time. It was a great superpower. Not only on the cultural aspect, but was also a power economically, religiously as well, because there everything was sacred, was a political power, and much more was a military power. Egypt dominated the world at the time, they dominated the region, and everybody feared Egypt. Nobody wants, wanted to face Egypt. So if you think, humanly speaking, it would be impossible for the people of God to get out of that situation. And we see today as well, the world lives like this. Man lives like this. Man lives in slavery. Man is, is trapped to the spiritual Egypt, which is the world. We are not saying... We don't want to compare the nation today, biblically, to the Egypt of that time. It can be compared to the world in which we are living today. But there is a difference from that time. There is a difference that we can say that situation was a situation that the difference was that God was with 
was conducting the strategy of the deliverance of the people. God was in control. God was in command of everything. That's why God, Lord, called Moses and instructed Moses. And he says, Moses, you're going to do this, this, and that. God gave all this strategy to Moses. And Moses now, he relays that information to the people. In the beginning, Moses was a little reluctant. He said, I don't have the means. So, in other words, I don't want to do this. Give it to someone else. But Moses there, he felt incapable. Incapable of doing that work. But God gave to Moses the means. Not only the human means, but the spiritual means. And many times today, man inside of the church, a servant of God, feels incapable, incapable of doing the work of God. Oh, I can't preach. I cannot evangelize. But my brethren, look. God, He does not count on the ones who have the abilities. But God gives the means to do ones he, he wants to use. God calls anyone. God looks to the heart that is willing. The heart has, has made a definition in the Lord. The heart is open to receive the word of God. And because of gratitude, God gives the means to man to testify of the power of God. And that's what happened. And so we see that the Passover here was a moment, was the beginning of a new time for Israel. It was just the beginning. So the text said the following, This month is going to be for you the first month, the beginning of the months. So the Jewish calendar is different than ours. Because here, it was a new time for Israel. It was completely different from what we live today. But here was the be beginning of a new time, of a new season, of a new life for Israel. So it would be the beginning of a new life. And now they were free, delivered from Egypt. They, would, they were no longer trapped. They were no, long, they were no longer dependent on Pharaoh, at the mercy of Pharaoh. So now... Israel would live a moment of freedom, free from the greatest oppressor that was upon them, which was Pharaoh. So the word says that this is going to be the first month. And God was establishing there a new time for Israel and making everything new. Everything became new. The old things were left behind. God no longer remember the moment of slavery of the people. Everything was left behind. The moment of suffering, the moment of, of the oppression that existed upon the people, the moment of the disobedience the people ha had always disobeyed the Lord. So God, at this moment, He reset it everything with Israel. From this moment forward, we have new life. And my brethren, we as well. One day, the Lord as well took us out of the claws of Pharaoh. One day, God delivered each one of us and gave us a new life, gave a new start, gave us the means so that everything that we have done in the past and all of our sins, they were all left behind. Everything was resetted. So it was the beginning of a new a moment in which we were now and we are now under the powerful hands of God. God brought each one of us who are here watching this service. God delivered us from death. God gave us a new identity. He gave us a new direction a new destination and this moment in which everything restarted for us where the scene that that trapped us that controlled us was left behind and now the Lord placed us on a path that will lead to deliverance to eternal life isn't it true the church of God lives like this the church of God each one who are here tonight 
we live like this, depending only on our God, depending only on the miracle. We no longer count on the world or on Pharaoh, but we count only on the blessing of God for our lives. So everything that the Lord was doing, everything that God was bringing of information to Moses and consequently was being relayed to the people, all the instructions of this special moment just before the Passover, before the moment of the departure of the people, everything that they were living those days, they had a prophetic meaning. The plagues, they had a prophetic meaning. Everything that happened had a prophetic meaning. So we're not going to enter into everything that God has done, the plagues. It's not necessary. The brand already know all the prophetic meaning of the plagues. Today, that's not our focus here. But how Egypt was leaving the operation of God, the, the meaning of God, the, seeing the power of God through each plague or everything that happened, that was a defeat to one of those Egyptian gods. So everything that happened was a sign from God so that the Egyptians could see that the, and a, a sign from God to strengthen the heart of the Jewish people, of the Hebrews, of the people of God. So everything that happened there was to show that truly the people of God was was going to get out of that situation of slavery. My brethren, everything that we live today, the call of the church, we also see a special moment on God's clock, in the prophet, prophetic clock of God, we see also a special moment for the world and for the church because everything that is under the power of the creation of God man lives a moment of expectancy man keeps waiting for the end of everything everybody everybody sp speaks about it not only the Christian people not on, only the ones who are inside of the church but every, everybody says that the planet can no longer uh, keep up today man is waiting for the end and in fact the word of God shows this to us the signs are out there the church also leave the moment of the departure of the church the moment that the Bible says the rapture of the church and the fulfillment of the prophecies of God they are being fulfilled every day we see this and what we are waiting for is, is Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, it is the cry of the church, the plea of the church, come Lord Jesus. And that's what we are waiting for. The moment in which we are living today is, come Lord Jesus. While the world lived out there, thinking that they, the world is going to end, uh, we are not going to, everything will come to an end, but the church knows that. In fact, what is going to happen is the return of the Lord Jesus. My brethren, the world today lives also waiting for everything that is about to happen. As I mentioned, the plagues are out there. The signs are showing. And also upon the world, we see the signs. We see the warnings of God pointing out and showing that Jesus is at the doors. And the last plague was the plague of the darkness. Is the, the second to last plague was the, the plague of the darkness. And then was going to be the death of the firstborns, right? So we see that the moment in which we are living today is the, exactly the moment as what was described there in the book of Exodus. The moment of the plagues where moment of the darkness where the enemy is that controls the world where we see today is people are lost people are doing terrible things people are scared people are hungry people are thirsty of hearing the voice of God people they want and they need to hear a word of hope to hear something that will give them an opportunity to get out also of the situation in which they are. The world lives like this. The people that are around us, they live a moment, the same moment that we are living now. In the moment of pandemics, 
Everybody's scared. They don't know where they want to go. Are we supposed to wear gloves or not? People are even afraid to get home. They are afraid of getting home. In order for you to get home, you have to have like a a, a room there, like clean room where you can throw medication and cleaning agents on you. You cannot wear shoes that you wore outside. People, people are not afraid to go to the streets. Uh, you, you, in before you were afraid of sending your child to school, afraid of somebody who's going to shoot them. Now you're afraid of getting home or to bring uh, a virus that may contaminate the family, the parents, the elderly. Moment, my brethren, we are living a moment of darkness, a moment in which the fear is taking a hold of the life of man. And all of this, it was prophetic. It was all prophetic because we live in a world that has no values anymore. People no longer give worth to what is right. Isn't it true? Pupu, they have lost all of, of what is that point out to spiritual morals, the family. People now live truly a moment in which no one can see anything. Everything that we see is our dense darkness. There are upon the world, the darkness that is upon the world, taking control of everything. But it is interesting, my brother, that while the world that in Egypt, the Egyptian people was experiencing this darkness upon the people of God, inside of the house of the Hebrews, the house of the servants of God, there was light. They were leaving the moment of the feast, the moment of the departure, just before the departure. Because for them, it, what, what was being proposed to them, what was being placed ahead of them, was the moment of deliverance. It was a new life. It was a new beginning. Something that they had never experienced before. Imagine, 400 years slaved. The small family that entered there, the small group that entered into Egypt, from the family of Joseph, now 400 years later, thousands of people, they had never experienced freedom. They were all involved culturally, we can say. They even were, they were probably uh, adoring other gods. Not everyone, but a few were probably involved because when they were in the, in the desert, they, they were hungry. They, they were missing the former gods. They were completely involved with the Egyptian life. Many felt the desire to go back. But now, at that moment, they were living a special moment, the moment in which they were about to get out from that situation. And my brethren, the Church of God lives like this. While the world is going through dense darknesses, darkness, we are leaving a moment of feast, and this feast will be marked by the return of the Lord Jesus, and that's what we need the most, and that's what we want the most. At that moment, the family needed to be gathered together, and this month we pray for our families, and we're leaving a special moment with our families, inside of this moment in which the world is leaving, inside locked up and we are also live a moment with our families the church gathered the family gathered the church gathers a body today we are participating in the service yes yesterday we participated as well every day we participate in the services online and why is that because this is healthy the instruction of the lord is this prepare the lamb leave with the lamb small one a few days there were all these instructions, all the teaching from the part of the Lord. And today, the families, they live like this, celebrating this great promise that will be the return of the Lord Jesus. My brethren, what we want the most is to get out from this world. What the church needs the most and what you need the most, and I'm sure that 
what you want the most is to get off this world and meet with the Lord in eternity and to live in this promised land which is eternity and that's what the po the people needed the most to go to Canada the promised Canada getting out of Egypt and go to the Canada and what the church needs the most I feel this I need this and you who are participating with us here in the service if you didn't feel this you would not be here the Holy Spirit testified this and my brethren the Lord is not going to allow us to be without a nation the promise of God that he was going to take us to the uh, heavenly Jerusalem and that's what we want the most the lamb there which represent the Lord Jesus was presented the lamb when John the Baptist he saw Jesus he said here is the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world. It was no longer the Lamb that was a literal sense that took the sin from the people of Israel. But John the Baptist looked and says, This is the one who is going to take the sin of the world. Because Jesus came to save the entire humanity. Isn't it true? And now the family says, the text says, This Lamb, you're going to do this. You're going to take the blood, put it on the doorposts. You're going to have to cook the lamb this way on the oven. If, if the lamb is too small for family, you call your neighbor, you invite your neighbor to participate on this banquet together with you. The text says that in my bread in this month, especially this week, we are going through a special moment inside of our church, a moment in which the Lord has revealed that Sunday we are going to have a special moment, a special message that was already preached for us a couple of times. This is going to be the third time, but in the same way that many have been blessed hearing this message for the first time or the second time, many heard many neighbors, many family members, many friends also have been called to participate and to hear and the testimonies that were shared about those two events that took place there were great testimonies of people that had never heard the teaching of the word inside of Revelation showing biblically what the world is leaving and what the church is leaving and this week, we're going to have an opportunity as well to speak about this. And in the same way that one day we want to get out of this world, one day we have been called by the Lord to get out from this world and to have a new beginning, there is also thousands of people that are out there waiting for a call from God. People that are waiting for a moment to hear a message to be able to hear something that will lead them to think and to say, look, surely I need to get out from this life of slavery. I need to have a new opportunity to know truly what it is to live with Jesus. And my brethren, the church of God needs. And the text says, if the Lamb was if your family is too small for the lamb, call your uh, neighbor, the, your closest neighbor. Call your your relative, maybe your father. May not live what we are experience what we are experiencing, your nephew or your cousins, your uncles. If you look at all the ones who are out, outside of the presence of the Lord, you see that this word, the word of God. It's, it's a life and this text here this experience that was the four almost four thousand year old uh, uh, four thousand years ago they they experienced it is the same for us we are living the year 2020 and how many people are around us that need to hear a word of hope the time for Egypt the world the world will continue Egypt is out there but the church of God will depart 
In the same way that Israel departed, we will also depart. It's not going to be Pharaoh that is going to hold the church back or the things of this world that is going to hold you back. It's not going to be the pleasure of this life that is going to cause you to lose your salvation, Jesus. So, my brethren, the word of God for us tonight is get out from Egypt. Let's, let us get out from Egypt. The invitation of the Lord is let us leave the special moment, the moment in, that precedes the return of the Lord Jesus. Do not lose your blessing. And test, give your testimony. Invite. Make an effort. You, you may need to call today or tomorrow. Everything is valid. A family saved in Jesus is a family that is blessed. If you don't have this opportunity of having of, of an entire family saved, my brother and sister, we still have a few days. We have been fasting for this topic. We are praying. The Lord has given us this blessing of us to get ready and prepare yourself to receive. But you need to sow the seed. Sow the seed. Call your Invite your neighbor. The Lamb of God is at at the disposal of man to save man. Amen. Let's hear a song. Let's sing together a song. Amen. Only one? We're going to have another one? No. Amen. My brethren, the desire of God is to give to many a new time, a new life, a new opportunity where we are going to be free from the judgment 
of death and we are going to live eternally with Jesus. Amen. We're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord for the blessing of being already in the presence of God for our salvation, for our call, for what God has already done in our lives, in our families. Lord, we praise your name. We thank you because we are people that is free to contemplate the beauty of your holiness. We're free people, Lord, to speak, Lord, of your power. We're free, Lord, to speak of your wonders. We're free people, Lord, waiting for the great day where Maranatha will be fulfilled in our lives. We praise you, Lord, for your word tonight, which is life for our lives. We exalt you, Lord, for your grace in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Reverend, the Lord has shown many people hungry, thirsty, people that were lost, people that lost their ways, people were doing things that only the ones who, who don't have the direction from God can do. But the Lord was giving let me see the gift. The Lord was showing that. Just a minute. Where it's a gift. <laughs> Very well. The people, they were doing things that were absurd things because they were, they were dehydrated and that would cause them to get confused and people would do things that were completely Illogical. And my brethren, like we say, many people out there, they need to hear about Jesus. Let, let us do our part. We have all the, the tools. We have everything that can give us the means of having more lives that are saved. The more people are saved, the more people that are accept Jesus, the sooner will be the return of the Lord Jesus. So do your part. Let's do it as a church, as a family, so that the Lord may be able to reach everyone. Let us pray, finishing the service. Lord God, we praise your name, agreeing, Lord, with the prayers that have been made, with the glorifications. And we ask that your word may generate in us boldness, generate in us an awakening, and the desire, Lord, to speak about you, to speak about salvation, Jesus. Give us, Lord, authority. Give us the means to speak on behalf of your name, and that we may be honored by you, Lord. Prepare your church, prepare your entire people, Lord, for this weekend, the moment in which we are going to be sowing the seed, and your word is going to be preached and that your spirit may have freedom and find open hearts so that your spirit may be dwelling there. Receive our service adoration to your name. Is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Brethren, we have come to the end of yet another service. Now we are going to allow the brethren to greet one another. Let us open our microphones. And I say goodbye to everyone with the peace of the Lord. Pai do Senhor, meu amigo a todos. Pai do Senhor, Manu. Pai do Senhor, Manu. Saudade, Manu. Amém. Boa noite, irmãos. O que tem? Amém. A paz do Senhor a todos aí. Que Deus os abençoe. Amém, irmãos. A paz do Senhor. A paz do Senhor.